each other. Uh, so today we have uh, four or maybe five speakers, and I think it's about 25 persons who have signed up for this uh, uh, webinar, and I think that's really good. And uh, we will uh, handle it in this way that uh, I will soon present the first uh, speaker. And uh, after each presentation, we will take some questions. And uh, if there are remaining questions after the seminar, these can be emailed to Federand, and then uh, Dominique will uh, send them to the uh, person who can answer them for you. Uh, so it's time to start. So if you haven't done it, mute your phone, turn off your mute your microphone, tur turn off your phone, and I hope you can be active listening and take this opportunity to learn more. Uh, so the first speaker we have today is Paul Kenny from Tipperary Energy Agency, uh, and uh, Paul will be first uh, uh, explain how the Elena. Uh, funding works for us and then he also will uh, uh, tell us about uh, a project uh, they have run in uh, Tipperary. And Paul has been uh, working with the energy agency in Tipperary since 2006 and he has been the uh, CEO since 2012. Uh, he, is, uh, he has a Master of Science and he's a mechanical engineer from the beginning and has, has a Master of Science in Energy. And uh, he is involved both in renewable energy projects and energy efficiency projects. Uh, he has a great knowledge in the areas of wind, biomass and solar energy development. So please welcome Paul. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everyone can hear me uh, clearly. Um, so I'm going to start for the first five or ten minutes with a, um, an overview from the European Investment Bank themselves in terms of their own description of their program. And then I'm going to spend the bulk of my time on um, uh, how we have used the Elena Fund um, in, in Ireland and, and how maybe some of the tricks and tips and how we put it together and the knowledge we put into it at the beginning, how long it took, uh, the watch outs, the potholes, the banana skins, um, and I would really hope at the end of this that you feel empowered to use this absolutely brilliant piece of European financial engineering that uh, has really helped us to upscale the energy transition in Tipperary. So I hope you will be able to take control of the slides, but if not, Dominique might um, slide one on, please. There we go. Okay, so in, in terms of the, the first slide, just a, a quick outline of what we're, what we're going to talk about in the first chunk, which is really what is Elena, um, what type of organizations and investments does it support, um, and a couple of quick case studies, which I don't know very much about, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll quickly go through the next slide, please. Um, okay, so I guess the, the first thing is it, what does ELENA mean? European Local Energy Assistance. Um, we're all used to acronyms, um, but it's really targeted at uh, local government um, originally. Um, now it's really targeted at local government, local energy agencies, and even the private sector can use it. Um, it is part of Horizon 2020, so it's a research and innovation grant. Um, so the, the funding model and the the pre-financing, if people are used to Horizon 2020, it's, it's very similar to all of those type of things. Um, and I suppose the most important thing it is, it is a grant for the, the staff time to prepare investments. It's not a grant for the investments, it's 90% it's of the eligible cost of staff time. Now, in reality, if you're an organization, start, you have staff overheads, you have travel, you have transport, um, you light and heat and all those sort of things. So in, in reality, it's not 90%, it's probably nearer, nearer 50% of, of the full cost. Um, but that is a significant piece of funding for, for any project development. Um, there, it, it has been quite successful um, in terms of the amount that has been awarded. So 139 million to date. Next slide, please.
Okay, one of the big uh, challenges with smaller energy agencies is the minimum investment. So it is 30 million of minimum investment. Um, the budget allocation is, is really um, first come first served. However, I will say that from most of the discussions from the officials in the EIB, they have never overspent and the, the door is absolutely open. Um, I think it's important to say that the, the, the place where you should be before you apply for Elena is having a reasonably good certainty or understanding of the investments. So it's not a speculative project. Um, the, the obligation, as I'll talk in a second, means that you, you, you need to really make sure that the project is going to be implemented. Um, so in terms of the obligation, so for sustainable energy projects, they want um, 20 times the investment. So for every million euros invested, they will allow you 50,000 euros of, um, of grant for project development assistance. Um, that's slightly less um, or slightly more for every million euros of, resident, of, of residential buildings and urban transport, it's, it's better. Um, in the case of the leverage not achieved, so if you don't succeed, um, they will claw back the grant. But in reality, what most organizations would do is they would make sure that the investment is, um, is being implemented before they, they use the full quantity of, of the money. So they might get a guarantee from a municipality to implement a streetlight uh, program before they start the tender process and spending the money on staff time. Um, one very important thing, um, we as the energy agency and many other um, organizations are not the final um, investor. So in, in our case and in many other cases, it might be an energy agency being the beneficiary, but a local authority or, or a private homeowner being the investor. Um, our job is to help them invest and make sure their costs of project development is quite quite low. Um, and we have a three year period to implement the energy efficiency projects. Um, I'll talk a little bit later about, um, about the, uh, the level of activity before the contract starts because you don't want to start uh, at the signing of the contract date. You want to, to be up and running. Next slide, please. Um, so they're the, I suppose, the, the public sector. Um, so you'd have a lot of local authorities, a lot of energy agencies, um, or some sort of amalgamation of, of bodies. Um, and in terms of private entities, you often have um, banks or, or other um, organizations de developing projects. Um, I think it's important to say that the, the the technical assistance shouldn't be for the purpose of producing a profit. Um, so in many cases, you will be challenged around that space. And most FEDERN members, if not all FEDERN members, um, are non-profit. Um, I, I know not all. Um, so in terms of the technical assistance, it should be done on a non-profit basis. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so in terms of eligible investment, so probably the vast majority is in the area of renovation of public assets, be it buildings or street lighting. Um, the next big chunk would be building mounted renewable energy. So non-building mounted renewable energy, so standalone wind farms or solar farms wouldn't be eligible. Um, district heating and cooling um, and other local energy fac facilities such as um, smart grids and so on. Next slide, please. In terms of urban transport and mobility, it's it's really, it's about investments that go beyond um, the current kind of uh, alternative fuels in, in, in urban mobility, but it covers a lot of things like recharging infrastructure um, and upgrades of existing systems and so on and vehicles. Next slide. Um, in terms of residential buildings, um, the, the real activity, I suppose, would be the, you know, the energy audit of, of buildings, um, you know, the, the, the production of certificates, um, 
you know, procurement, uh, organizing the money, um, grants, setting up one-stop shops, which is what we've done, um, and procure, you know, getting a contractor, educating homeowners, all of the things you need to do to get a, a residential building investment uh, to be implemented. Next slide. Um, okay, so in terms of eligible costs, I kind of covered this a little bit. Um, it's really just the personnel cost, so it's, it's salary, social security charges, and other um, remuneration-related costs. Um, and in terms of external, so like we would subcontract and others would as well, um, for technical assistance really. So technical assistance, legal assistance, financial assistance, and putting together all of these. Um, you know that that's kind of the the the, the mix between ex internal and external is really what you say you want to do so for for some organizations it would be substantially external for some organizations it would be substantially internal um, um in terms of the the scale of of internal versus external uh funding next slide okay in terms of the application process the the pre-application um is quite simple. Um, it's it's at the time I did it, I think it was one and a half pages, so it's it's two to three pages here. Um, but it's basically a, a a very simple. Is this sensible? Um, and in reality, a phone call or a cup of coffee with one of the EIB people will probably get you the, to the point of this is what that that is, and and they're very helpful in that in that space. Um, they'll come back and give you an application form, um, which is which I'll go through a little bit more in, in detail in my side of the presentation. It's about 30 pages of a detailed document, um, including tables and charts and so on, and whatever the supporting reports might be. So if you were going to do a single investment in street lighting, for example, um, the report would have a summary of the investment but then you might have an appendix with the, the detailed breakdown of how many different types of lights and what the existing energy use is and what the, the, the proposed case energy use and the savings and the investment and, and how much it'll cost for traffic management and all of the other bits and pieces that would support the application. Um, then there's a, a toing and froing and an over and back with the Elena team to refine it. They will ask you questions. So who exactly and where exactly is that investment and can you define that? And what you do basically is you answer their questions by updating the, the, the application form. So they'll, they'll say, you're not clear on what that investment is there. Can you elaborate exactly what it is in terms of the building renovation? Then you agree that it's the final version and then it goes to, to, the, appro to the European Commission for approval. I will say that um, the effort is really the, the the effort is if you look at a keypad um on the screen there is five and six that's the big effort um the middle one and the middle right um that's the that's where all the work is i don't know how many are rejected from the european commission once um the european investment bank is happy but i would presume at that stage that the european investment bank has guided you well to an application um, and then the last two boxes really is just the, um, the finalizing of all the different agreements and, and, and guarantees and contracts. Um, and that does take a little bit of time, but, but not particularly onerous. Next slide, please. Um, that's just a map of Europe. So there's a reasonable geographical spread of Elena. Um, so quite a few in the UK, quite a few in Italy. Croatia is really punching above its weight. Um, well done to the, the, the third presenter. Um, and we have only one in Ireland. So I'll move on. Um, so just here's one uh, that we would have uh, looked at when we started ours. So the beneficiary is the Regional Public Service Company for Energy Efficiency. So it's a public body, essentially. Um, they were targeting renovation of private houses. Um, with a significant enough uh, aim in terms of the number of, of buildings to be upgraded and an investment of 36 million um, or 38 million. Um, and the Elena grant is 1.8 million euros. And OK, 
Okay. So in terms of the Elena support is the, 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 the money was used to develop the public service company for energy efficiency. Um, it was used for um, the technical assessment of homes and supporting each homeowner in the works. Um, and, and, and also the cooperation in terms of um, promoting the service with other local with the local municipalities. Um, so efforts around that, um, you know, identifying potential homeowners, preparing the contract. So, so the marketing of, of energy renovation, or as I would often call it, the selling of the energy transition. Um, next slide, please. Um, so the, the next one, which I know nothing about, um, you can all read it on the screen, is the tramway in Malmo. Um, so an 80 million euro um, and 3 million euros of that is supported from Elena. And you can see, you know, it's, it's around the technical assistance, the, the preparation of tender documents, the financial studies, the specs, the standards, um, and, and really to look at the the right method of, of maintenance and so on for, for a new piece of public infrastructure. And again, there's lots of tramways across Europe happening. And um, the next one obviously is the refit of public buildings in London. Um, so the beneficiary is the Greater London Authority, which is a, essentially a regional government. Um, and they were focusing really in insulation, renewable energy, PV, um, heating controls and all that sort of stuff. They set up a, a full design team um, which is very important. Um, um, the, the one of the real understandings that we have had in Tipperary over the last five years is tendering out for the construction of innovative heating systems um, to a market that doesn't really understand innovative heating systems. You often get very poor results. Um, so we set up a full design team and, and as has the Greater London Authority. So that project management and design team for um, energy renovation is very important. So they designed, set up and managed this, this framework of approved energy service companies um, using energy performance contracts. Um, they gave support to uh, local public sector organizations to, to procure. Um, and to look at the financing options. Um, and I think it's really important to say that in an Elena or in the energy transition, um, when one is asking organizations, be it homeowners or, or public bodies or SMEs to take a leap from the normal, which is fossil fuel based heating systems in, in particular in, in the UK and Ireland to renewable heating systems and renewable electricity you need to support them. And that support is different for different sectors. And Elena allows that support. So in, in the case of support to public organizations, that might be, this is the right type of contract. Here's the contract terms you should use. Um, here's the right financing model. And um, that's the right technology for that building. For a homeowner, it might be sitting down with the homeowner and explaining, this is what a heat pump is, or this is what PV panels do. And here's what I would do if this was my house and, and that sort of explanation. So they're again, quite ambitious, hundred million. I think we could probably all agree that hundred million in, in the greater London area is a drop in the ocean of what it will cost to implement the energy transition. Um, but it's a good start. And I will move quickly on to my own slides. Uh, is there any, first of all, is there any questions on what I've presented to date? <clears throat> Katharina here. Uh, thank you for your presentation about Elena, Paul. Uh, and uh, my first thought, and that is uh, 30 million, million euro investment. That is the minimum size in order to support these projects. Or Yes, and, and you'll see that Picardie and ourselves targeted 37 million. Um, and the difference between 37 million and 30 million is something around the leverage factor. So okay. we'll get into this in a little bit more detail, but they request your application to have a leverage factor of 25 to one. Okay. And they will not reclaim any money over 
uh, 20 to 1. So they give you a buffer. Okay. So when, when we were applying, and it's exactly the same numbers as Picardy, uh, 25 to 1 at 37 million is 20 to 1 at 30 million. So our target is at least 30 million, and we won't have any recourse. Um, and the, I suppose the goal is 37 million, but if we hit 30 million, it's, it's perfect from our point of view too. But uh, 30 million, when you are not in Greater London, uh, since we are in northern Sweden, uh, in a rural area, that means that you need to have a very good collaboration with the public authorities. Uh, if, if um, I, so, or, no. Okay. No, no, I will say, I, I, I will explain what we, what we have done, okay. um, Katarina, because Tipperary, I think 70% of people in Tipperary live outside of the towns. It's it's right. a very rural county. It's um, when I said 30 million people looked at me and said, you're absolutely mad. Um, but it's, I'll explain how we put it together. It's about looking at all of the investments over the next three to four years. And, and Great, Paul. All of those and partnering with, with the people who will be the investors. Great, Paul. And then we look forward to your next presentation. Okay, so uh, may I interrupt sorry. you? Sorry, Dominic speaking. May I interrupt you? I would like to add, uh, Catherine, that uh, the EIB is quite flexible with uh, uh, small countries such as the Baltic, Luxembourg, Malta, etc. Or, and I suppose I'm not sure, but you could ask to to the staff of Elena to okay. for the area like yours. That's mean with a, a not so high density of population. Okay. And Thanks. that we have to check afterwards, but I think it's uh, yeah. okay. Thank sorry, you, Paul. I will give you the back the floor. No problem. Uh, and one of the other things I think is important to say that if you achieve a, an investment of twenty-five million, they will they will they will only not give you the the one to twenty of the the difference between twenty-five and thirty million. So it will still be a, a, an eighty-five percent successful project. Um, so it's not an all or nothing. So maybe you might apply for 30 million and maybe you might only achieve 25 or 24 or 26. And um, it's still very successful. So, you know, I think the important thing is to say they target 30 million and they want you to achieve 30 million and they'll talk about 30 million, but they will be quite happy if you achieve 28. Okay, so I'm going to move on to uh, our piece of this jigsaw. So I'm going to talk about sustainable tip. Um, so there's a nice little brand and logo, which which is part of marketing um, the energy transition. Um, and really, the the Elena program is used to fund the implementation of our sustainable energy action plan under the Covenant of Mayors. Um, it is the energy transition in Tipperary from from our perspective. Um, there obviously is, is a lot of things happening in a normal functioning economy in terms of energy renovation, but this is the bit that we're going to lead. Next slide, please. Um, so one of the, uh, just a very quick slide um, in terms of it's building on the existing, so the Covenant of Mayors Steering Committee or our SEEP really is, is a function of all the civic organizations we looked at what the opportunity is in Tipperary, you know, everyone who has done an energy, uh, a, a, an energy baseline and a, a CO2 emissions baseline and, and an energy transition plan will have a good idea. Um, and what we looked at when we started our preparation of our SEEP, which is not our Elena program, um, but in, in preparation of the SEEP, we asked each of those public bodies and civic organizations what each of them are going to do over the next three years. And we asked them what would they like their partners to do and we had a bit of you know a, a, a bit of a list of of ideas we parked some of them um and some of them have happened even though we parked them um but really we we started the to, i suppose to fertilize the ground of of the energy transition in terms of seeing what each of the civic organizations role is so next slide so really what I'm going to talk about today, I, I'm going to talk about the structure of the energy agency because that's important to, to Elena. Um, I'll give a little bit about the technical investments and, and sustainable tip. Then I'm just going to go through how we brought together the application, how we define the investments, how it will be spent, the bank guarantee and a few other bits and pieces of lessons learned. 
Next slide. Okay, so the first important thing to say is um, for anyone who knows what an energy agency does, you all, you all know, but our structure is we're a non-governmental organization, essentially. We're, we're a public body in European terms because we are governed by the municipality and, and, the, and public bodies. But in Irish company law, that doesn't mean we're a public body. It means we're a, a private company. We're not really a private company. We're a public company. Um, but we are not underwritten by the state, which is the real important part of this discussion. So if you were underwritten by the state and you were a local government energy agency, where uh, if, you, if you do not achieve your investment, the municipality will pay back the Elena grant, that's fine. If you're not under, underwritten by the state, which is the case in our case, we had to get a, a third party private bank to give the guarantee. So there's a bit of a discussion later on about what that really means. Um, but it is just, it's a fundamentally important part of the secret to Elena. It's who is going to guarantee the EIB that you will give the money back if you fail to reach the investment and you spend all the money. Next slide. Okay, so in terms of what the, the sustainable tip is, and that's just a picture of the cover of it. That's a picture of the local dignitary signing it, the mayor and, and, and uh, chief executive of the local authority. Um, so we call our sustainable energy action plan, we call it sustainable tip because it's very hard for citizens to relate to um, sustainable energy action plan for three years. It's, it's just a, it's, a, it's a way to market the idea of activity. Um, so it's a website, it's a marketing campaign, it's a series of events in terms of knowledge, um, it's, it's you know, hotel rooms filled with people talking about retrofit, it's farmers coming to a big event to, to talk about their role in, in the energy transition. And really it's, it's a springboard for, for other items like the Elena project. Um, and it's just a three year action plan, it's not, it's not any longer. Next slide. So in, in terms of what we looked at for the application to Elena, we, we, we looked at the actions from the SEEP that were talking about specific investments. So we, we didn't cover the softer things like training and capacity building and you know policy and so on, which are part of the Sustainable Energy Action Plan, but we really covered the actions from the action plan that were around um, investment. So we picked four, four things. Um, single family homes, we have, I think in Tipperary, about 92 or 3% of our housing stock is single family homes. Um, we looked at non-residential retrofit, so schools, public buildings, SMEs, community centers, um, factories even, um, and it's SME factories only, not, not, um, not multinationals. We are, have the municipal public lighting program included, um, and we have a renew, renewable heat incentive that is, um, was supposed to be launched in 2017, hasn't fully been launched in 2018, and I'm getting very worried that we won't achieve that investment, and that's the, that's the, um, the green bar that you see below there. Um, so some of the things are, are maybe not as successful as others. Next slide. So when we put the, um, how we're using the development support um, is we're using some for marketing, we're using some for energy audits, we're using some for preparation of the investments, project design and tender, and the project management or implementation of the project we do, but is not part of the Elena. So in terms of what, what happens really is the cost of doing all of those works for a typical project is somewhere between 10 and 15% of the total investment value. In reality, Elena is providing um, three and a half to four percent of the investment value. It's it, one to 20 ratio is obviously um, 5% and, and, and so on. Um, one to 25 is, is 3.9 or something. Um, so 
Elena provides a portion of that investment value um, and the remainder is funded from the individual clients, the energy efficiency certificates or uh, energy efficiency obligation scheme under the energy efficiency directive. Um, and it just depends on the client um, how this is charged. So if it's our own public body, they just pay for it and they get the energy certificates and they pay us money. Um, but in terms of the homeowners, we, we, we have um, below cost energy audits to try and get people interested, um, below cost project design and, and tender and above cost project management so that we recover the cost that we've lost in, in terms of audit and, and project design. Um, so in reality, you need to look at what the business plan of selling these investments is if you're doing something like what we have. So our aim is to try and get um, about 600 buildings upgraded. So that's a campaign. So that includes marketing. If you're just doing one local authority public lighting scheme, um, you don't have marketing costs, but you will have costs of engaging with the mayor and you will have costs of convincing senior management to make an investment and while those costs might be titled differently they are marketing and engagement costs just the same so that's part of the process of selling the energy transition next slide please so when we put together the application so that's just a, a screenshot of, of of the spreadsheet that we did, um, we went, we sat down and we did a brainstorming. The, Paula and I sat down for for a day and we said, "What are all the investments that we could support to be made in Tipperary over the next four calendar years or, or three three project years?" Um, and and we brainstormed it and we picked. We ended up with eight sectors. So we looked at the agricultural sector, the community energy sector, the four we already have, and so on. And we, we, we fleshed out, well, what could we do here? How realistic is it? How much will it cost? So what's the service provision cost? How much investment could we make? What's the ratio? What are the risks? Um, how likely is it going to happen? Um, and we settled on four sectors. Now, one of them was this, the support scheme for renewable heat, which is a government program to support renewable heat. And we didn't think that it would take them. This was Christmas 2016. It was almost ready. It's now Christmas 2018 and it is not launched. We didn't think it would take them a further two years or two and a half years, it may be. Um, but there were other programs that we thought you know, we just didn't feel comfortable applying for money for those that that might not materialize. And I think we've been vindicated because the one we took a small risk on, it, it has apparently, it is not going to materialize to the same standard as we thought it would. So we looked at each of those sectors, so domestic renovation or non-domestic renovation, and we did a full plan for each of those. Um, which essentially was a tab, which we looked at what are all the different investments that we could make. So how many windows, how many doors, how many heat pumps, how many solar panels and, and so on. And we, we spread it out per, per sector and then amalgamated it into one. And we used all of the tables, as you can see there on the right, all of the tables that are in the application form. So we amalgamated them. So if we change the number of houses up or down by one, it changed the whole form. Um, and I think that was a really smart idea because you really have to refine over and over again to think about how you're going to hit this 30 million and, and, and where the service costs will be and so on. Now, if it's a case of you have one investment like public lighting or, or like a tram, I wouldn't bother going to that level of detail. But if you have multiple investments in multiple sectors to try and achieve 30 million, and this is the secret, I would say, um, you may need to do some iteration around that. So we took four days um, with two staff, myself and Paula, um, and we brainstormed and wrote the whole application in those four days. And we we basically told everyone we were on holidays um, so that we could immerse ourselves, get the application together and, and put it in. So that's not a lot of time. 
you know, and in reality, the, the two pager went through in November. They sent us the application form in early December. We thought about it for a week or two and, and then just scheduled a block of time to do it. Next slide, please. So um, it took probably six or eight weeks from then um, until the investment, the EIB came back. Um, they asked a lot of questions, um, none of them particularly hard to answer. Um, we updated the application. So they asked a question about where is the investment? And we had to detail exactly where the investment was going to be. Um, there was a small bit of further analysis or detail on technical investments. Um, but one of the things we didn't do very well at the first uh, pass was the resource plan. So which staff, what percentage of their work over the next three years, how many new staff, how much will they cost, how much external expertise to the detail of, you know, 10,000 euros per annum for three years on legal costs. And essentially it was a full project business plan um, with exactly how all the money was going to be spent. How, how the external experts were going to be procured um, and the full detail of, of the resources. So in doing that, it, it, it was a really good exercise because it produced a, a detailed business plan of what we thought we would need to do to secure these investments, um, including marketing and, and so on, communications, you'll see it there in the, in the graph below. It probably took a week. Um, in February or March to put that together. Um, and we, we submitted that um, and then had a few small over and back over the next kind of six weeks between March and May with the further clarifications. But really by, I think around the 8th or 9th of May, um, the application was more or less finalized for want of a better word. So we were at kind of month five at this stage. Um, the next uh, slide, please. Um, so really, I suppose that was the that was the early May. It took another couple of weeks, um, and the contract was signed in early July for first of August start date. Um, but I think an important thing to say is that the energy agency isn't state guaranteed. We needed to get a private bank to provide that guarantee. Um, so they give that this private bank or, or one of the large banks in Ireland give a guarantee to the EIB. And then we give give them a guarantee back, um, so that that it also includes a mortgage on on the energy agency assets. Um, we pay for that guarantee. Um, handsomely is a polite way of saying it's expensive. Um, it is an eligible cost, um, and that pr production of that guarantee was very challenging. Um, so some organisations listening will have that challenge, others won't. So if you're a um, if you're a public publicly underwritten energy agency, the public body that underwrites you can sign that guarantee. And it's no big deal and no one will pass any any um, no one will pass much much heat of it. Um, however, if you're not, it's a it's a challenge. And if there's anything Anything I would say is about trying to figure out how to navigate that. Um, so what we essentially did is we agreed that we would secure the investment, have the contract signed for each house and, or each public building. And that would allow us essentially to say, well, that investment is secured and then we would then spend that money. So we had to prepare the first few investments um, without securing any money for those. Um, but because we're talking about 600 small investments um, of 50 to 80,000 euros each to make up the, the million uh, or the 30 million, um, we were able to do that. That's a lot more challenging for single large investments. So while the contract was signed for the 1st of August, um, signed in, in early July for start date, the 1st of August, um, it took another five months to get any money um, because banks move very slowly and, and just the, yeah, the process of legal people reviewing Elena contracts that they didn't fully understand and so on and so forth took, took time. 
Um, and I will say at that stage, we were desperate for, for the money because we had prepared a lot of investments, um, but we knew the money was coming. Next slide, please. So I would say lessons learned. Um, three years is a very short period of time. We're almost halfway through our three years and I can't believe that's already the case. Um, we listened to our, our friends in Picardy. We, we, we went over there in, in, in January 2017 and they suggested that one of the things they didn't do right is they signed the Elena contract as they were starting. And if they went back to do it again, they would start a year before or six months before and have investments started and prepared um, so that when the Elena contract is signed, there is, you know, there is a significant movement already happening. So we started pretty soon in January um, ahead of signing the contract so that when we signed the contract, the further invest, we had enough investments moving um, to, to hit the hit the ground running. Um, um, we're ramping up since then. Um, we're, we're growing significantly. So, so as I showed in a previous thing, that the investments are to scale up over years. Um, with the early, early, early year being three million and the last year being ten million or twelve million, um, and that is challenging. And you know, any organisation that doubles two years in a row is going to really struggle to. Um, have things like systems in place and get staff in and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's challenging, um, you know. So so don't. That's one very important. Don't start the date the Elena contract is signed. Um, start well before that. And if that means you say to the European Investment Bank, I know we're ready to sign the contract for the first of of January, but I'm actually going to start it on the first of June, so that we've three years from then. Um, yeah, if you need a private bank, uh, they move slowly, so get working on it. Um, build flexibility in the program, because what you think is going to happen in three and a half years' time or, or so on is not going to be reality, so make sure you have flexibility. Anyone who's used to writing Horizon applications knows that flexibility is very important in any of them. Um, markets change, technology changes. Uh, business processes, grant processes, subsidy processes, tax, tax changes, and um, regulations change. So it's important that all of those things are, are, are allowed for in terms of flexibility. And look, I will be honest and say that the European Investment Bank have been brilliant to deal with. They're very open, they're very honest. You can share with them what you're really thinking. How do I do this? This is my big risk. How do we work around it? Um, they really want to see you succeed. They don't want to take the money back. It's it's a Horizon grant. It's not it's not a bank loan, and they just administer it. So the last thing they want to do is take the money back. And they're very open and flexible. They want to see it done. They want to see the money spent properly. They want it audited, um, and are very careful about expenditure, um, and are very careful about ensuring the investment is made. But they're very good to deal with from, from that perspective. And I just say, I just have a couple of, uh, just a couple of pictures there. Um, we had the, the, an Irish parliamentary delegation of elected uh, members of parliament come to visit um, on Tuesday of this week. Um, and the National Main News had a, had a piece on sustainable tip and, and how, we, how the energy transition had started in Tipperary. So you know it's it's making progress from a from a national perspective. Uh, next slide, I think that's my last slide. No results. Last slide. Um, so just I suppose results so far. We haven't achieved anything in the government heating program. Really, it's a year late so far and still hasn't started. Um, the residential and non-residential program is moving. So our first year we had targeted. Um, the 1 to, to 20 ratio is the green bar is the target. Um, sorry, the 1 to 25 ratio is the green bar is the target. We were slightly under that and slightly over the 1 to 20. Um, we caught up, so we're well ahead, even with one of our four strands not moving. Um, we're, we're well ahead of target and we're well, well ahead of the, the minimum expenditure. Um, 
and in terms of um, where we expect to be, I, I would expect that the last year of 12 or 13 million will be challenging. Um, but, you know, we're, we're making progress. And I, I will just say provisionally, because we, we haven't finalized all of the investments um, for 2018, although it's, we've most of them finalized, some of the, some of the public lighting expenditure is, is still very much uh, underway at the moment. I think that is my last slide. Yep. Um, so maybe if you, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Yeah. So please feel free to come with the questions to Paul. Okay. Then I start with the first question. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ivan, you, sorry, Katarina. Ivan, open his microphone as well. Okay. Yeah. Even Hi. Hi from from Croatia. Uh, Paul, thank you for, for the for the shared information. True, true. The cycle is story. Uh, still, uh, just one one clarification. You you said um, and you gave you advice. Start early. Um, all the costs before the sign contract are not eligible, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah okay. I, I guess when when I say start early, Ivan. Um, the, the point really is, if 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 you are only starting to employ people the day the contract starts, um, those people will take three to six months to figure out what they're doing and and how they're, you know, how they're getting, you know, how do you, the preparation of investments, and you'll have lost six months. So you're better off to take a risk and pay for the development cost up to the start point yourself, and then move on from there. So so maybe. Yeah, maybe that's a, an expense that other people can't take, but um, yeah, you need to be making sure that the three years that you're moving within the three years. So I've no doubt, the same as yourselves, Ivan, um, you will have had many meetings with the local authority before the contract was signed for, from New Light. Um, you, you'll have had a good idea of your investments. You won't be starting with, well, well, where do we go from here? You know, it's very much a case of start while you're moving. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to share with the guys here today. Uh, we spent 12 months or, or even more just preparing. Um, it took us practically a lot of time communicating the idea, and we spent a lot of resources, time and money for, for doing that. But that, that, is, that is really necessary. So after the contract is signed, you have to have everything already running up. That, that's the idea. Any more questions? Okay, uh, then I have one question for you, Paul. Uh, you said, how, how wide can the scope be of the different actions that you add together in a product like this? You said that in your case, it was uh, you, you were both working with single family homes, schools, public lighting, renewable heating, and it was uh, from the uh, CAP uh, action plan. Was that the general thing in it, or uh, I mean, you need to have one something that keep it together, I assume. Yes. So the I I suppose the the the, the glue that keeps it all together is the energy agency. So they're mm -hmm. all the investments that um, we are helping people prepare. Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of the local authority, public lighting. Um, We've done the reports and assessments. We're we're doing some of the design work and some of the project management, and some of it is outsourced. Um, but it's only really our eligible costs that 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 are included. Um, in terms of the other the other things, we really took a blank piece of paper and say and said, where are all the investments that we will work with people to make over the next three years or four years? And I think that's the important thing to say is you, within the terms, within the eligible costs or within the eligible investments, um, and, you know, obviously there's investments that people are making with us that, that aren't eligible, um, but within those eligible areas, you need to, for us in a rural region to achieve that scale of investment, it required us to think about um, bundling all of them. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any more questions? I, 
Yes, I have a question. Is it uh, possible to apply for money from some other places when you're doing the preparations? Um, there is a smaller program, which is a 15 million, which is the, um, the PDA under Horizon 2020. Um, um, in, in terms of the preparation costs for Elena, I, I'd say that it's probably a local, so a national or local um, question of whether your local government or someone else might, might um, support some of that investment preparation. Um, in, in our case, we did it, we did it ourselves. Um, we felt it was, you know, we, we looked at it and we thought this is something for us. We think we should do it. And we took the, took the risk or the effort in putting it together. Now I will say, um, it's probably three person weeks work, maybe four. Um, so it's not a huge cost. So maybe five to 10,000 euros preparation cost. So it's, it's less, it's much less than a Horizon 2020 application, I would say. So that's um, maybe something to say that it is probably the lowest cost money that you will ever get. Um, and I would say that the preparation of a funding application to get the five or 10,000 euros to put together an Elena application might be a waste of money. Um, because you might spend three days or four days trying to get the other 15 days uh, preparation costs. There was another question came in on the on the text there. Um, how much cost is for personnel at the energy agency? A lot of consultancy and other preparation for the projects. Um, in our case, we are, I think, um, about 75% is personnel cost. Um, about 20% is for technical assistance. So we have um, external service providers that, that complete energy audits and, and surveys and, and so on. Um, and another maybe 5% for the bank guarantee, legal and financial advice. So really quite small. Okay. Any more questions or... Then I would say thank you so much, Paul. It was very interesting to, to, to uh, listen to you and how you have used the uh, Elena funding in Tipperary. And I really hope that you will succeed to uh, finalize the product in a good way. But it seems that you are really on the good way to do that. Yes. Thank you, Paul. No problem. Uh, next, next speaker. Uh, is uh, Alvaro Pérez de Laborda from the Basque country uh, in uh, Spain. Uh, and I had the advantage to meet Alvaro when we worked in the Data Fraction project. And Alvaro is an industrial engineer and he has worked in the energy field for 30 years, both in the private and public sector. And since 2001, he is working for the uh, <coughs> the energy agency in Basquian and uh, yeah, EVE is the shortening of it. And uh, he is responsible for coordination of the work carried out for public uh, administrations. And uh, he will talk about uh, the project Codesco, uh, where they have used uh, Elena for technical support for implementation of uh, energy measures in building owned by the regional government in the Basque country. So welcome, Alvaro. Hello, hello, Alvaro. Disappear. Oh, I had uh, my, my microphone was switched <laughs> off. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. You can open uh, Dominique your, for, uh, you can open your camera if you want. I I have already done that. Okay. So I don't know if you can show it uh, if you want to do it. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dominique, for the organization of the event uh, and Caterina for inviting us to to this uh, uh, 
nice opportunity to to present our experience of uh, in the in the Elena uh, project uh, we are applying uh, on the buildings belonging to the government to the regional government uh, of the Basque country the short name of the of the project is Codeso we will use this name so uh, you can retain it uh, I will try not to extend Tend to match my explanations, uh, so there is time for questions at, at the end. Please, uh, the next slide. Rick, next slide. Okay. Uh, this is all about the the public sector and the. Uh, buildings belonging to the to the regional government um, there we are two two million people in in the Basque country 2.2 million people and we have quite a, a strong uh, public uh, regional uh, organization administration and we are working in more than 1,000 buildings we're talking about one more than 1,000 buildings in in the region uh, the role of the Basque Energy Agency in the project is uh, coordinating the work of all the departments of, of the, in the in the Basque country in the in the regional government and subcontracting the uh, energy audits of all these buildings. Well, uh, not all of them. We have uh, chosen part of at least the, those more, most relevant ones and uh, we're going to audit around 600 uh, buildings uh, we are doing this work in behalf of the departments of, of the of the of the government so please uh, next one next slide okay uh, you have there Mm, this regional decree, uh, it may seem a little too technical to talk about the decree in a presentation about the, in a seminar about this uh, Elena facility, but I don't think we should, we would have uh, got this grant, this Elena grant, uh, without uh, previously approving this, this decree, which is the basis, the basis of, of our project. So uh, we have an objective of reducing to 25% the use of energy in the regional government by 2025 compared to 2015. Uh, this is the, ob the object of the, of the decree is uh, to um, oblige to all the um, regional public administration to start working in energy efficiency and uh, make uh, some arrangements in, the, in their buildings. First of, first of all, it, it was uh, necessary to, to make uh, an inventory of buildings and the energy consumption of buildings where um, we already did this two, two years ago and uh, we have a full inventory of, of all these buildings. Uh, the decree also obliges to uh, monitor the energy, the use of energy in, this, in these buildings. And uh, we are now working on installing and mon monitoring devices in, in the buildings. Uh, and the, the um, Degree also asks to make energy audits in, in all these buildings. And this is one of our main, main, main tasks in, in, the, in the project uh, as uh, the Regional Energy Board. Uh, from the results of, of the energy audits, uh, opportunities for saving energy and installing renewable energy are identified in, in the buildings. And each uh, 
organization in the in the government needs to make a, its own action plan. So we have the results of the energy audits, and uh, we have a, a report for for each building, and we need need to put all these reports together and define what are we going to do and when and where we will get the, the funds from. Uh, the uh, decree also obliges for uh, that new buildings are near zero energy buildings that would have come anyway from the European directives, but uh, the decree uh, put forward this obligation in advance. And also, uh, it's compulsory to that the, all the new vehicles used by the government use alternative fuel, so uh, diesel and gasoline are not uh, anymore allowed for, for new vehicles. You have there, in case you are interested, the text of the, of the decree in Spanish. Uh, it's uh, inserted into the presentation. Uh, so you can take it out from there and you have also a summary of in, in English that we prepare for the European Investment Bank. Please, next, next slide. Okay, uh, we are talking about real buildings uh, belonging to the, to the government. I said that we prepared an inventory we are talking about uh, buildings belonging to the uh, education department, more than 200 centers uh, all around the last country. Next slide. Uh, more than 40 buildings belonging to the university in three different campuses. Next slide. The transport, the railway transport network also was included in the in the project. Uh, next slide. Also, um, the regional police uh, has uh, more than 40, 47 really uh, police stations and, and offices that are included in the project. Next slide. We have all the health system, uh, 10, 12 hospitals, and 150 uh, health centers in different towns in the West Country. Next slide. We have the um, general administration with uh, 25 uh, buildings in total. The next slide. We have the Justice uh, Department with uh, 19 buildings, one of them quite big as the one in the, in the picture. It's uh, in Bilbao. Next slide, please. Then we have a bunch of uh, several other, other buildings. We have the uh, unemployment offices, for example, 45 unemployment offices. We have uh, 250 uh, blocks of, of house, pro, uh, social housing, housing also, and the technology and uh, enterprise parks. Uh, we have three parks in the West Country, so and several other buildings. So we are uh, talking about the specific buildings shared by different departments and that uh, respond to, to different uh, responsible pe people and, and organizations. So it's quite a complex uh, project, uh, the one that we are talking about. And uh, we are uh, organizing it in, in, the, in the following way. Uh, uh, Please, next slide. So this is, uh, these are the, the stakeholders in the, in the, in the project. Uh, we have there the European Investment Bank. Uh, we have put the 
short name in Basque, in, well, in, in Spanish is Banco Europeo de Inversiones, and that's BEI, not IEB. Mm, it is not shown the relationship with the, with the uh, European Commission. The European Commission is behind the European Investment Bank, and it's the one that um, provides the final approval of the of the Elena grant. We have the Basque government. Uh, our energy agency, EVE, belongs to the Basque government. It's 100% public, belonging to the Basque government. And we have the all other departments of the Basque government who are the owners of the, of the buildings. Uh, this next slide. So we have all, all the buildings belonging to um, the government departments and organizations and uh, our energy agency has little to we we can provide uh, our expertise and our recommendations about how to do in these buildings but it is not our responsibility to implement projects in in, in these buildings so how how are we going to 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 do this uh, please next one please next slide so uh, the Basque Energy Agency is uh, receiving the funds from the European Investment Bank and uh, we cannot give these funds away to, to the regional government or the organization so we need to ex expand the, these funds ourselves. Uh, this was not so clear at the, at the beginning of the project but we learned it so uh, what we did is to uh, make uh, to write down agreements to govern government uh, departments so we have been signing the the, the project started uh, the first of january of this year 2018 uh, we had already started before the the Elena grant was uh, given we had already started working in the project as Paul said it's important to start early otherwise uh, three years will come very very fast and you won't have time to to, to do investments so uh, we had already started to to make agreements before to work with uh, some of the of the departments and uh, that's the hard part of the work. Uh, we wanted to sign these agreements because uh, it's important for us that uh, we are going to make uh, energy audits of buildings, of government buildings. Uh, if, we, if we tell the government organizations that we are going to do energy audits for them and, and we are going to do it for free, uh, they will say, okay, fine, uh, very nice, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and we said, but you are obliged to, to, to do then the, the investments, uh, or at least you need to, to have a minimum compromise to, to make some investments. Otherwise, we will have to give the money back uh, at the end of, of the three years because uh, nobody will have uh, uh, work on on their own buildings in energy saving. So we wrote down agreements with the government departments that wished to sign these agreements. Not all of them we wanted to do this. So with uh, some of them we are working. With others we are not working. With the uh, department of education, for example, we we started very early because we thought that it was the the department that would need our um, help the most, uh, but uh, one, year, one year of half after starting, starting working with them, we still haven't uh, signed the agreements. Uh, the agreement with this department of education. With other departments, we have already signed agreements and we are already working with them and we are already uh, subcontracting the audits of, of the buildings. Next slide, please. Then this has nothing to do with with uh, the Lena scheme, but it's important for the management of the project. We have an in 
interdepartmental steering committee that is uh, coordinating the the general activities uh, of the of the project and mainly it's the the, the the place where responsible people at the political level and at the technical level in the different government departments meet and share their uh, points of view about how to implement the the decree and uh, they there's a place also where uh, our energy agency provides uh, offers the our our support and and uh, everything is coordinated so, so next slide please Okay, so contracting needs to, to be done by by the Basque Energy Agency, as I said, but the final beneficiaries uh, of the technical work, at least, are the regional government departments and, and organizations. So the, the agreements between uh, our, comp our uh, organization and the, the, the departments of the government are, are basic. Uh, we are receiving just 74% uh, of the project development services. Uh, we will justify why this figure and not 90% uh, uh, later in the next slide. Uh, but we have to finance the 100% of the energy audits for, for, for the departments of the government. So, where do we get the remaining 26 percent uh, we we get these funds directly for, from the government and from uh, our energy agencies own own funds and own budget uh, we at the beginning we we wanted to share the expenses be, between between the elena well, uh, we, we just get, have had a part of the expenses from Elena, and we wanted to have some money from the departments of the government to 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 um, have the enough budget. But it was quite difficult to to reach agreements, sign to sign these agreements with the departments of of the, of the government. Uh, it was not impossible, but. Mm, the 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 responsible people in the departments of the government um, were less willing to to sign these these uh, these agreements. So it took a lot of time at the beginning to start with this, and finally we decided to to ask directly to the government for the financing of the of the remaining part. Uh, up to to 100 percent so in this in this way we have achieved better coordination and uh, we have um, uh, accelerated the the project and we have accelerated the investments uh, to fulfill the, the the decree next slide please so uh, Paul has already talked about this. These are general rules about the Elena program. Uh, in our case, the estimate, estimated cost of energy investment measures is uh, 35 million euros, and uh, 1.8 is the budget for the pre development services including staff costs. Uh, we have requested just 74% of that. That's 1.4 million euros, uh, which is a leverage factor of 25, 25.2%, 25.2, sorry. Um, Paul said before that uh, the European Investment Bank wants to leave uh, a margin so at the end of the project uh, we have no problems uh, we have 
this 25 percent to 10, uh, sorry we, this leverage factor of 25 that may go down to, to 20 uh, at the end of, of, of the project if we don't uh, reach this 35 uh, million euros of investments and we cannot justify that uh, so so that's the reason for for having just uh, this leverage factor and and this uh, and this uh, 74% of 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 the lena uh, facility say that uh, the minimum leverage factor is 20 better consider the leverage factor of, of 25 from from the beginning next slide please the process is quite long my recommend my, our recommendation is to prepare a short note of the project and present it directly to the european investment bank uh, if you are willing to to invest or you are thinking about invest uh, about having a, uh, an elena applying for a, an elena project go very early to to the to the bank and show them your your intention and they they are the ones that that know best how how you should present the the your uh, application and in case that uh, Elena is not the best suited uh, uh, financing tool for your project, and there there is other uh, like uh, the PDA, and they will tell you. So so uh, the best uh, thing to do is to go very early to to the to the bank. Then the negotiation process has been quite quite long since the first meeting in brussels in june 2016 with the bank uh, until the the final version of the application in november 2017 uh, why so long only partially uh, has been for the, the time it takes to, to approve the, this in, in the bank and in the European Commission. But uh, as the application was uh, being prepared, we also matured the project. So we had time to make agreement to change uh, our organization. So it, it was good for us also to, to have this time to, to prepare ourselves. Uh, and we also explore some ideas that were finally discarded uh, as for example uh, including mobility services also in the project uh, but uh, that that's quite complicated and makes the the, the project more, more complicated because you involve you are involving two different uh, departments of the european commission in the project so so it makes the project more more complex this next slide Uh, and it's the last one. So we have already made made the the we started this year as as we said. We prepared an inception report at the beginning of the project. We we had uh, four months to to prepare this inception report where we are showing what uh, how we are arranging, making the arrangements for the project, and then. We have to prepare a progress report. It's uh, six months, uh, showing the expenses that you, you've had in in the last six months, and the investments that the in our case, the the government is making in sustainable energy and uh, renewable energy, and which are the obstacles and relevant issues. Uh, I saw there with which are the amounts uh, pre-financing in the report and final pay payment 40 uh, percent 30 percent and and finally 30 percent uh, there's an 
another matching that uh, you may have uh, for the project, uh, you know, the duration of the, of the project is three years, but uh, there's the possibility of extending one, one extra year in sure. case it is ne necessary. So, and uh, so if what happens if, if you are not able to, to, to make all the investments in, in the project and the project was not, is not going ahead as, as, as uh, initially foreseen, uh, Okay, this this may may happen. So the, the the many of the of the parts uh, that the, of the actions of the operator do not depend on us. So it's possible that the rate of investment in the in the government is not the one that we initially estimated, and we are not able to 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 have these 35 million euros investments in 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 three years. So. Uh, if uh, necessary, the, the, the European Investment Bank may, may li limit your, your financing uh, and mostly what they would do is to, to retain the, the second or the, or the, thing, the third payments in, in case you are, you are not uh, able to, 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 or they think that you will not be able to, to make the investments as, as uh, initially forcing. And I think that this is, was the last, uh, the last uh, slide. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, in, in any case, uh, thank you very much for for your attention. Are there? So please, do any we questions? have any questions to Alvar, Alvarez? Okay, then I think we we uh, go on since time is running, and we will take the uh, final questions uh, at the end after the uh, presentations. So next up is uh, Jamie Caballero from the region of Castilla Leon in Spain, and uh, Jamie is from the. Uh, Somosil is a public infrastructure and uh, environmental uh, company. Uh, and uh, Jamie is uh, head of the procurement and the corporate investment. And uh, he has been in charge of uh, all of the legal mat related matter, and especially for public procurement. And he will present the Elena Somasi project, which aims to support the development of an investment program focused on biomass, public buildings, and street lighting. So, please welcome Jamie. Hello, Jaime. Hello, hello. Your, your microphone is on. Perhaps you have to increase the volume. Ah. Hello, hello. We cannot hear you. It Okay, so what we can do, Katarina, it's uh, switch to uh, Ivan and Yolie, and then I will call <coughs> at the same time. I will call Jaime to see if, where is the problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Th then we switch to the uh, uh, last uh, uh, presentation. To okay, do we have show me here? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Who is speaking? Okay. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. hello from Sunny Zagreb. Uh, hello. So now we are switching to Croatia, uh, and we have our federal president uh, to, with us to, today. So, so uh, Julie Dumak from Northwest Croatia uh, and the region and the agency there. So I think we will have both uh, Julie and Ivan presenting. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hello again. We, we decided to give you the, the strongest team possible. So, so. Oh, we are delighted. We are really delighted. And I think we really have a strong team here. So Julie is both the 
Managing Director of the Northwest Croatia Energy Agency, and he is the president of uh, Federan since 2013. And together with him, he has Ivan. How do you pronounce your second name? Who, Prejol. 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 Okay. Who is the assistant manager director of the Northwest Croatia Regional Energy Agency? So please welcome both of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to give you a short story about uh, our biggest project so far. Uh, and we are we are quite proud to, to, to announce that that story is going to be on two pages on uh, the most influential Croatian national newspapers on Saturday. So, so you are two days in advance on Saturday. The whole of Croatia will, will know about that beautiful project. Uh, yeah, uh, I understand that Dominique runs the slides, right? Uh, I cannot ex uh, ex run exactly. the slides. Okay. So, so well, the idea was uh, the the idea of the new light project was uh, to aggregate uh, many small investments projects. Croatia is mostly rural country, so so most of our municipalities are small. Their their uh, street lighting uh, systems are small, and then well, the idea was uh, to, to 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 generate big investment package. We'll tell you a little bit later how that. Uh, uh, succeed at the end. Uh, we we can go directly to the third slide, uh, Dominique, please. And the next one, yeah. Uh, so these are just the facts. We started uh, a little bit more than three years ago. Uh, originally, uh, 57 uh, cities and municipalities supposed to be our beneficiaries. Uh, they are they are loca located in the two counties. That two counties are uh, two of four of our founders. Uh, Northwest Croatia uh, Regional Energy Agency is established by four counties. Uh, so so two of them uh, uh, signed a letter to, to to the bank to Elena Team, nominating us to have a contract with the bank and to work on behalf of them for 57 cities and municipalities. So from the beginning, it was rather complicated process, a lot of uh, politics and politicians involved. But given that there are so many uh, involved, uh, they let us do what uh, we decided that it, 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 it is clever uh, to do. Uh, here we, we should just stress that the, the main difference of Elena and, and Horizon 2020 or, or, or typical PDA, uh, uh, usual T PDA project is that this is two-way process. Uh, 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 so so you, you make uh, application, the, the, the recommendation is that you approach Elena team first, uh, that you talk to them and during the, 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 the application process, which is rather simple application for you actually discuss with Elena team a lot and once you finish your application you actually have project which is all maybe not officially but but uh, kind of approved because whatever you, you wrote there it was discussed before it was uh, approved it was so th there are no there are no uh, surprises. It's not like uh, Horizon PDA that you send your project and then you wait, you don't hear anything from Brussels and then you get or you don't get the project at the end. So, so, so this is this is much better, I must say. Uh, uh, it's it's transparent. It's easier uh, for for the applicant. And we are we are big fans of uh, Elena uh, of Elena facility. Uh, next next slide, please. Uh, so here are some numbers again. Uh, this is the, the total project budget. We got 90% from uh, Elena uh, facility. Uh, the rest, uh, remaining 10% was uh, secured by two counties, uh, as I said. And then, well, it was a lot of contracting, of course. There is a standard contract between the bank and, and the beneficiary, final beneficiary. We, 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 which was uh, us, but uh, uh, we made a contract with the counties. We also made a contract uh, with, with the cities. 
So we, at the end, we, we had a guarantee uh, uh, from the cities, from the cities and municipalities. Theoretically, I could take that guarantee to the bank. If they withdraw from the project, I could uh, take some money from them. Another question is that that would be political suicide, but never mind. Yeah, just just to add one one detail, important one. Uh, Paul mentioned that um, um, in his project he didn't know the final beneficiaries. They were like uh, private house owners, and uh, obviously he could not uh, have all the names and all the final beneficiaries listed when he approached the European Investment Bank. On the other hand, we had all these 57 municipalities um, joined. We had already signed this bilateral agreement, so we used that agreement as a, as a guarantee. We didn't have to go to the bank uh, or other bank, bank guarantees uh, was not asked from the EIB, only these contracts uh, uh, with local and regional authority. Yeah. Good. Uh, uh, next, please. So, yeah, what we just described. So, so here is the final, uh, 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 final uh, structure. structure. Uh, and as Ivan said, well, we 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 knew uh, who are our cities and municipalities. And again, of course. An advantage of being an energy agency is that you know your mayors, your cities and municipalities, and they 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 should know you, of course. And probably that this project would never happen without that trust uh, from both sides, because they 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 know us for ten years, and and they trusted many things they they took for for granted from us. Uh, next one, please. Right, so, so here are the phases. We, we didn't have uh, much uh, data uh, at the beginning, so, so we had to do energy audits, complete inventory. Uh, that an inventory was uh, done uh, under GIS uh, 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 database. So, so one immediate benefit for cities and municipalities was that they, they got a very clear picture, very clear inventory, what they have and what are their problems. Uh, uh, they, they didn't have that before. Uh, in the meantime, as a phase two, but I think activity started from the beginning, uh, Regea team developed uh, model contracts. So we developed uh, model contracts for design and build, for EPC and for uh, public-private partnership. At the beginning, we, we, we had some hope that uh, public-private partnership will be a model for, for big cities. Uh, at the end, they decided to go for EPC. And actually, majority of the cities uh, decided to go uh, to, to, to EPC, uh, which is, again, great because in, in the past, in Croatia, we didn't have uh, very successful uh, examples of EPC contracting. And now we have, in, in, at the end, how much? Uh, 20, 21. 21, uh, uh, 21 example of, of, of EPC contracting, which is, we, we, we believe so, a really a breakthrough in Croatia. And again, a justification for that optimistic title of the project in New Light. Uh, we now have a situation that some, some municipalities, other energy agencies are asking about the contract. Can they use the contract for their projects, uh, which is really encouraging. Uh, just, just to add one thing, uh, luckily for us, uh, for the last two years, we don't have any grants for traditional financing available. So cities and municipalities had to choose whether to go for um, a bank for a loan or to use energy performance contracting like uh, financing from the savings. So they decided to go to, to, to this kind of financial model uh, and to use uh, the EPC. Uh, the most, most majority of uh, public authorities use the EPC as, as a financial model. Uh, next, next one, please. Dominique? Yeah. So just some of the challenges, uh, although there, there were, were more challenges, uh, I think those are, are, are clear. Uh, 
maybe the biggest challenge which was not mentioned here was a big confusion about uh, uh, possible use of, of structural funds uh, for street lightning uh, for, for some time it was an option or it was actually uh, undecided if Croatian cities will have some grants from structural funds for street lightning that created a lot of confusion a lot of uh loss of time because cities were were waiting to, to to get that information from the central government that was maybe the biggest the biggest problem in our project eventually it was clear that there will be no grants as even just said uh, uh which obviously supported uh, uh epc as as the way forward uh, other uh, uh challenges and, and, and problems are I think uh, quite clear uh, low energy price prices are definitely one 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 of the biggest uh, problems and general lack of, of knowledge and understanding of EPC and, and innovative financing that's that's something we need to address uh, every day but never mind okay uh, next one please This is well just uh, uh, what you would expect. Some advantages of bundling. Uh, that was the, the idea of the project from the beginning. And and obviously, if you go for an LEDA project, you have to have uh, big enough uh, project and the investment which is uh, big enough. Otherwise, uh, you can you can't apply simply. Yeah, just to add, try to include uh, as much uh, local authorities as you can. Uh, try to include also the bigger ones because they are financially viable um, and uh, try to try to communicate ba basically on a daily basis uh, we, we s practically spend each day communicating with them um, as I mentioned earlier it took us at least 12 months to 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 structure the idea and to present it to the local authorities and then when the contract was signed um, the follow-up of communication uh, was intensified and we practically emailed uh, all 57 local authorities uh, weekly basic and we I think more than 500 bilaterals meetings were held in, in the first year explaining the energy performance contracting explaining the baseline and all the all the data and, and the documents Next, next, next one. Yes, yeah, thank you. This is what what we what we did, and and well, some some again some challenges. This is probably very country specific, uh, and I would guess that it's different in different countries. But we did that energy audits and action plans to to address that insufficient uh, baseline data. Just some you can you can take a look later just some some practical details yeah just one one detail also uh it's very very important to gather as much data as you can because uh if you are um pursuing energy performance contracting you are not doing project documentation all the tendering process is based on the energy audits inputs on the inventory data so these inventory data um and information has to be very very uh, good quality and for doing that, we developed our own methodology how to do energy audits. Uh, all the all the auditors uh, had to use this, and based on this, we we got ourselves uh, four four million attributes gathered, digitalized, and we could then uh, do all the calculations uh, um, and prepare for for the for the ESCO market. Yeah. Next, next, please. Uh, again, an example of uh, our energy audits, uh, how detailed the analysis were. And again, this is one of the benefits, even for those municipalities. At the end, they, they not all of uh, 57 did the investment, but even those who did not uh, do the investment, they have a detailed uh, uh, energy audit. And, and, and well, now they know the actual situation in their neighborhood. Uh, next one, please. Again, some some examples. 
uh, about the action plans. So, so for all cities and municipalities, we did an action plan where we estimated costs before and after uh, reconstruction. And next one, please. Uh, we mentioned uh, one of the challenges that was a uh, really specific challenge. Again, it might be very country specific, uh, but we, we really invested a lot of times and well, colleagues, uh, Ivan and his team did hundreds of meetings uh, with local authorities, also with, with ESCO uh, players, with, with banks. Uh, uh, to, to spread the word about benefits of EPC and innovative financing. And well, we expect to, to, to be able to get the, the benefit of that enormous effort in the future as well. And next one, please. Uh, again, yeah, we mentioned that. We, we can go uh, to the next one. Uh, again, quite country-specific uh, obstacles we we we, uh, we faced, but the message uh, is that you should be aware of of uh, possible uh, technical barriers and, and all the legal barriers before you enter in such a uh, challenging project. So so preparation is needed, and we spent a lot of time to, to, to prepare the, the project even before official application, even knows. Yeah, yeah. at least 12 months. Yeah. So, so you should you should know your situation. Uh, next one, please. Uh, this is uh, some of the results, but we can go to the next one. Uh, this is the, the final result. Uh, this is what, what, what we achieved. So, so you can see that there were other models than EPC at the end. Uh, and the good thing about Elena is that at the end of the day, they are interested in investment. So, so, so you should be able to prove that investment happened. Uh, the, 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 the point which uh, is important is uh, that uh, tenders issued by cities and municipalities, uh, uh, once the tender is out, that's, that's a proof that the investment started and, and, and Elena, Elena team, the bank uh, takes that as a proof uh, uh, of the investment. Uh, there was a there was a one question in, in the, at the beginning where Paul, Paul presented, and uh, the question was related to the the minimum investment that was um, uh, acquired by European Investment Bank. Uh, our project uh, targeted 20 million euros, so it's less than 30, the official number. Uh, but uh, European Investment Bank was flexible enough to to give us uh, the contract based on these numbers and figures, and at the end. We delivered only 15. I said only 15. It's it's less than we promised at the beginning, but still the leverage factor uh, is achieved, and that's that's the successful story uh, from the EIB point of view. That's that's what I wanted to share. Uh, next one, please. And well, yeah, that's the the, the what just uh, mentioned by Ivan. So we can go to the next one. Yeah. Uh, other other results, uh, energy savings, budget savings, CO2 savings, all very relevant. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, still the bank is interested in investments. Uh, that's, the, that's the main point. Uh, next one, please. Yeah, just uh, one heads, heads up also. Uh, when we planned the, the uh, and when we structured the project, the LED prices, for example, were around 400, 400 euros per, per lamp per luminary. And the prices do drop and, and they do drop radically in, in, in LED sector. And uh, we, we planned poorly, I would say. Uh, we didn't uh, anticipate a drop of 10 or 15% per year. And that this is what would happen. Practically, 
we, uh, we increased the volume of reconstruction from 50% to 90%, and still we didn't achieve uh, 20 million euro investments, we, we achieved 15 million euro investments. So uh, heads up for you, if you are planning to do something similar, um, plan conservatively. Um, if you are in the in a street lighting, um, be aware that these costs uh, of, of investments do drop around 10% a year, and um, all the investments practically do happen on the third year, the last year. Um, so take that in, into consideration, please. Yeah, that that was really interesting. Uh situation that the, the price of equipment dropped down, nobody expected that. So, so Elena project can be full of surprises. Uh, some recommendations, we tried to formulate our wisdom, uh, the wisdom we, we, we generated from the project. Uh, it's pretty much what you would expect, and I, I think especially energy agencies are aware of some of the recommendations, so obviously uh, that cooperation on, on a regional level is important. Uh, use of uh, standardized methods and procedures are important. Uh, it's important to consider all financial models. Uh, from the uh, uh, New Light project, we, we got a lot of inspiration how to uh, combine financing from structural funds, from other sources. Uh, I think actually the whole Regea changed after new light model and, and uh, uh, all our activities took a new direction. So, 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 so now we think differently, we will work differently and it's, it was probably one of the most important uh, uh, points in, in the whole uh, history of, of the agency. Uh, next one please. Uh, Again, well, what we mentioned, uh, some recommendations for the brave ones uh, who, will, who, will, who will do the new projects, but that was mentioned before, so we can go to the next one. Again, uh, some opportunities uh, we will definitely in, in the future in all our projects, uh, consider uh, smart city aspects. Uh, that 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 opportunities are 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 there, and well, I'm I'm, I'm sure in in all around Europe, especially in Sweden, you are aware of that. Probably you were aware of that probably even before us. Uh, but never mind. It's it's good to remember. Uh, very important, but again, uh, energy agencies are aware of that. Uh, when you do uh, a project for a public sector, you should be aware about uh, election calendar. And we had that change of, uh, of we had local elections in the middle of the project. At one point, uh, we had a strange situation that uh, some of the cities wanted to, to step out of the project because the, the, uh, the government of one of the counties changed, so it was not the same political party again. And they said uh, something like, well, we could even pay to go out because we will not make a credit for another party. Then we will start our own project and so on and so on. So a lot of irrational thinking uh, you, can, you can hear from politicians, unfortunately. But again, being here for 10 years uh, made us Made, made possible for us to say, well, look, guys, uh, you, 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 you don't do that. Don't do such stupid, uh, stupid move. Uh, stay, stay rational. And well, it was the happy end at the end. And of course, well, communication, communication, communication. There, that's an energy agency uh, supposed to do that uh, all the time. And of course, uh, cities and municipalities need to be guided. Just, just money is not enough. Uh, next one, please. Uh, again, some, some wisdom of uh, Regea team uh, for you when you think about, uh, well, replicating a concept like new light or, or thinking about a new project. Uh, uh, well, anything special? Yeah, think big and involve as many cities and municipalities as you can. Just, Julia just mentioned there is a, a lot of political risks also involved. 
um, cities wanted to leave the, the project, maybe consortium. So the bigger number of cities and local authorities joined together, uh, the, the less risks of achieving targets. That, that's the goal. Yeah. Next part, please. Next one, please. Having having said all that, uh, and, and and having in mind all the problems, well, we still think uh, uh, only the best about Elena facility. It's it's one of the most practical and most uh, efficient uh, way how to prepare the project, how to finance uh, project preparation. Uh, it's not only uh, financing uh, of activities. It's a lot about building your in-house capacity. I told you that, that we benefited a lot. It's about building your network. Uh, so so we, we, we would strongly encourage uh, all colleagues uh, in, in Europe to, to, to try to use that facility. Uh, just next one. And just one example how, how quickly uh, we, we benefited uh, from the experience. Uh, we were in a position based on, on a positive experience of New Light project to, to mobilize and to, to inspire our capital city of Zagreb to, to make another application. It's uh, the application for another Elena project, which is ongoing now, uh, again for uh, modernization of uh, city street light system. Uh, we are now in position of being their main consultant. So the final beneficiary is just one city of Zagreb with us uh, uh, as their consultant. And this is uh, for the capital city, much bigger investment. Uh, and we expect uh, uh, to finish that in a little bit, uh, 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 in, in, in two years time. It's, it's ongoing from January. Uh, and the next one, uh, yeah. As, as I told you, it's a bigger project, but again, uh, based on experience from, from new light of Elena number one, we are now in, in comfortable position to advise on Elena number two. And it was nice to hear actually Elena team uh, speaking with uh, high level uh, people from the city of Zagreb. They said, well, just stick to that guys from Regea. They know how to do it. They did a great project once and, and your Elena project will be successful if you follow the, their recommendations. And next one, and that's us. Look how beautiful we are. Uh, <laughs> that's the uh, new light team now, the, the team of uh, new projects as well. Uh, and that's it.